Hi, I'm Gabby Shirley, and it's my privilege to introduce to you this year's Moral Courage Award recipients. This award highlights the resolve and fortitude needed to face a trying situation and the discovery of an inner light and spirit to carry on. Aaron and Lori Paholke are no strangers to summoning the strength to move forward. Aaron has worked at Moffitt Cancer Center for 22 years. It's where his wife, Lori, a former Freedom High School girls basketball coach, has received treatment for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. That alone is enough for any family to contend with. Now compound that with the loss of a daughter, then deepen that chasm with endless questions, doubt, and anguish, because that precious young life was claimed by suicide. So many people have contacted us, um, sent us gifts, along with the story of what Nina did for them. And it um, has helped us to be really proud. And in some ways it makes us happy, at the same time even more sad that we couldn't ha have a different outcome of what transpired. And as the kiddos head back to school this morning, we've got something to share with you. Yeah, this morning we're showing a couple of our own school photos. Um, my comment about mine is thank you for <laughs> allowing teeth to grow in because goodness gracious. <laughs> all jokes aside, happy first day of school Absolutely. from all of us here on Wake Up Wisconsin. At 27, Nina Paholke's career in broadcasting was on the rise. Her professionalism, her smile, her joy radiated across the airwaves at WAOW in Wausau, Wisconsin. But at heart, Nina was a Tampa girl. She attended Freedom High School, playing alongside her sister, Caitlin, on the girls' basketball team for two years under the coach's whistle of her mother, Lori. She was a tough kid on the court. Um, wouldn't back down from anybody. She was very confident in her skills and she was blessed with a natural ability to shoot the basketball. Nina helped lead Freedom to the program's only state tournament berth in 2013. She went on to join the USF women's basketball team, lettering for the Bulls for three seasons. A communications and journalism major at the University of South Florida, Nina parlayed her education into securing an entry-level producer position in Wisconsin, ultimately advancing to her role on camera. I was waiting to come on air to say happy birthday to you. Thank I you, I was blessed friend. to have you in our lives, and Aww. everyone needs a Nina in their lives. So. <laughs> yes, you know. For me, the thing that she was so, so good at is just connecting with the audience and making people feel like they knew exactly who she was. I mean, the stories that we hear from Wausau, from the mayor, from the police chief, she definitely made a difference in the community. She liked telling stories. She liked sharing the stories. She liked to be the one to kind of get to know you and share it and let everyone know. She enjoyed that. Everybody knew her. Everybody knew Nina. On the surface, the trajectory of Nina's life and career was firmly ascending on a course for long-term success and happiness. But sadly, that all came to a sudden end when she took her own life last August. Why? How? Attempting to discover the answers to those questions is something that tests the Pahokee family every minute of every day. In the wake of her passing, the endless tributes to Nina that came forth all shared a common theme, exuded love and positivity, lightened everyone's mood, was kind with a big heart and a contagious smile. These kind words also underscore the sad truth for anyone struggling with mental illness. We knew she had some things and she was working on stuff, but I mean, I can tell you, even on the, the day that we talked with her, she, she sounded fine, she acted fine. She told us everything's okay. And we knew, like I said, knew she, she had some things she was dealing with, but, but reassured us every, everything's okay. Recognizing anyone struggling with anxiety, depression, or any mental illness is half the battle, but not talking about it openly and frankly without judgment to seek out care is the stigma. And that's one thing the Pahokis believe Nina's legacy can help change. Ending the stigma takes all of us, realizing that mental health is just as important as our physical health. Recognizing that critical fact may be the best way to honor Nina's memory. The stigma just, it has to change because until it changes, um, I don't know that anything is ever going to change and we're just gonna see it more and more. Being in athletics, I think it's very easy to say, suck it up. 
um, be tough. And I'm guilty of that as a coach. Um, you know, I've been through my own crisis with this. And um, I think everybody just needs to be a little bit more understanding of what mental health is. And this, this helps. I think talking, getting it out over and over and over. We need people to be able to stand up and say out loud, I need help and it's okay. We have an opportunity to have a platform to make a change. And because change was so important to her and making an impact on people's lives, um, we're just continuing her legacy of what she would have done. And it's how we, we keep, keep her spirit alive with us. That's what we do, that's our child, it's our daughter. It's a labor of love. The love doesn't stop. She may not be here with us right now in person, but the love doesn't end.